What's up guys, welcome to another video. Okay, so we have another problem. Okay, let's prove that for every n, okay, this is um, this is some new information for some of you already. Okay, this means, this upside down a means for every n in the natural numbers, there exists, this is this backwards uh, e, there exists and a pair of uh, natural integers a and b such that n is equal to a b over a plus b so okay this is this is probably confusing notation but in common language what this means is that we can represent every possible positive integer n with with this formula if we only choose positive uh, arguments or inputs so let's how how should we go about this well let's just say okay so we want to find some kind of way to choose a and b of n such that it always works so let's just start with solving for uh, say a so this this thing is equivalent to uh, so we have n times a plus n times b is equal to a b and moving this to the other side and moving that over there we should get that a is equal to move this over here so it should be just n b and then we get a, a a sorry n minus b and then we move that so we get a b minus a yeah because because there was a minus sign here and then we just factor out the the minus sign so we switch it, the order down here instead so okay this this is completely equivalent as long as uh, this thing isn't zero but since we're choosing our b and n's this is not really really relevant at all so okay when we have this thing so now we want to say choose b in some way with respect to n that is that this thing is always an integer so if okay since we're only using integers to come since we're only computing with integers we know that as long as we don't have a denominator numerator the thing down that there <laughs> which one is it numerator or oh fuck it nemnare uh, okay anyway since okay w if we don't have anything down here we know that it's an integer right because uh, well yeah you you get you understand why okay so how should we choose b to make this disappear when there's an okay fuck it i'll just call it a denominator i think it's i think that's the right one um how do we make a denominator disappear well, when it's equal to 1, then it doesn't matter. So let's just choose, have a quick notation here. We just let b be equal to n plus 1. Then we get that this thing is equal to, okay, so we have n times n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus n so this is just 1 so this is just n times n plus 1 and we know that this is always an integer and we always and we only know that and we also know that this thing is also always an integer so for just i don't know for fun we'll just <laughs> check this out um if we just plug it into 
to the to the first one and see that it like it works out so what do we have here okay we have that a is equal to n times n plus one and we have that b is equal to n uh, n plus one so a times b um this thing th that should be just n times n plus one squared and then in the denominator we have n times n plus 1 plus n plus 1. And here we can factor out the n plus 1. So we just get a n plus 1 squared in the denominator. And then these those two cancel out. So we just get an n left and everything works out. So essentially what we're saying here is that we prove this by saying that for any given n, we just let a be equal to this and let b be equal to this, and then it always works out. As long, and we can also think about okay, when when doesn't this work out? Well, of course, when this this thing here is zero, which it never is, if a and b are positive integers, then it's always positive, so it always works out. And that was therefore the proof is concluded. Yeah, that was all for me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.